House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes is joining me right now from the World Ag Expo in Tulares, California. And Congressman Nunes is a, also uh, a member of the House Ways and Means Committee. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Chairman. Great to be with you as always. Thank you. I want to ask you about this letter in a moment, but first, I got to ask you about one of your uh, colleagues, uh, uh, Congressman Trey Gowdy, and his remarks recently on Fox News when he spoke with our own Martha McCallum. You've been joining us now for several weeks uh, for over the last year as you continue to investigate what it was that launched the FBI's investigation into Trump potential collusion with Russia. Is that right? Yeah, that, that's correct. And I think that uh, Mr. Gowdy's comments that he made earlier. Well, wait a second. We're going to we're gonna show those. We're going to show those comments. We're going to show those ones. First, let, I just wanted to make sure this is that, that your investigation is looking into how that investigation launched. So here's what Trey Gowdy said to Martha just last week. I am even more convinced that the FBI did exactly what my fellow citizens would want them to do when they got the information they got, and that it has nothing to do with Donald Trump. Congressman. What does Trey Gowdy say there? Well, what he's really talking about there is that Trey Gowdy believes that he has been told multiple times by the Department of Justice that Donald Trump, President Trump, is not a target of this investigation. He believes that he's been told that multiple times. And so he comes to the conclusion, well, if they were only going after Russians, if the FBI was only going after Russians and Donald Trump's not a target of this investigation, then what is all this about? And so the mainstream media continues to ignore that piece that Mr. Gowdy, I think, has clearly said now on multiple occasions, but was very clear about it last week, and that President Trump is not a target of this investigation in his own mind. Now, you have to remember that Mr. Gowdy loves the FBI and the Department of Justice. I think all Americans want to have a good Department of Justice and FBI doing their job. And if they're targeting Russians or Chinese or what have you, that's what we expect them to do. However, the challenge we have in this is that they actually targeted a political campaign that was Donald Trump. And that's where I think that uh, even though Mr. Gowdy believes that the president's not a target of this investigation, his campaign is, and I think that's where the challenge occurs. So, so do you think then that the FBI did the right thing in terms of uh, I investigating the campaign looking for Russia interference? Well, you know, Mr. Gowdy, uh, has, you know, under what he's heard, he believes the FBI was doing the right thing. And you know what could solve this? For a year, we've been waiting, almost a year now, we've been waiting for documents from the Deputy Attorney General. So Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein could provide all the documents, all the information that we need this week, and we could write a report. We could write a letter by this Friday week. that says, hey, it looks like the FBI, it looks Stay like the FBI us. did everything Stay right. We, us, could, we could finish Nunez. this by Friday. I want to ask you about this. Stay with us. And we are back with House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunes. And Mr. Chairman, you were just saying a moment ago that we could clear all of this up this week if you were to review the documents. Are you telling us you have yet to see the documents that you've requested from the Department of Justice, which gives you a timeline into how this investigation into the Trump campaign started? That is correct. So last August, we issued a subpoena. We should have been provided all of this information that we've been asking for over and over and over again. We issued a new subpoena, and so now we've been waiting. Uh, we've, we've attended two briefings. Uh, they were very small briefings, not a lot of information, but we were happy it was progress. Uh, we believe that there are some documents, information that we will review this week. Uh, what I would say is if you don't have any, anything to hide, the Deputy Attorney General knows that Mr. Gowdy would love to exonerate the Department of Justice and the FBI. So just provide us all the documents, everything that we're asking for, let us comb all the way through it, and we'll issue a letter on Friday and we'll be done with this. And we'll, and we'll be able to say, look, the Department of Justice and FBI did nothing wrong. Uh, there was no FISA abuse that occurred here. There was no issue of opening a counterintelligence investigation into a campaign. There was no issue uh, with looking at how that investigation was opened. Uh, if there was any Five Eyes intelligence that was actually used to open this investigation, we'd like to see it because we have yet to see it. Those are all uh, outstanding questions, not to mention the questionable timeline of the, of the briefings that we have had uh, where we know that the counterintelligence investigation was opened in late July. Well, that's fine. So if that's all the information you have, then why are there these other strange activities 
leading up to late July, particularly in the spring. I was trying to understand this because you, you broke the news on this program more than a month ago that you've looked for reasons and, and, and catalysts to understand how an investigation was opened and launched into the Trump campaign. And you said to us, based on the Five Eyes intelligence of all of the, our partners across the world, that there was no intelligence that you could find that was launched uh, that investigation. And yet, here you have your colleague, Trey Gowdy, saying, the FBI did the right thing. So I'm trying to understand where the disconnect is. Well, I think on, on what Trey Gowdy's saying, and we got to be very careful because the media has tried to make a bigger deal about this than what it is. What Trey Gowdy's specifically talking about is this small slice of the investigation that we're looking at as it relates to whether or not informants an informant or informants were used. That's what he's referring to when he talks about that the president's not a target of this investigation. I believe that Mr. Gowdy knows very well and he's been instrumental uh, in helping us get to the bottom of the FISA abuse that, that did occur. That, that is absolutely for sure. Right, you, the, now, the dossier was unverified what, what, and that was used to get a FISA warrant. Yes, and, and there's new information actually this week that the media is ignoring. So, so the New York Times has reported in the past that the Australian ambassador, Australian high commissioner is the one that brought this uh, to the attention of the United States government. Now, typically that would have gone through FBI channels. It would have went through the embassy in London and it would have came across officially. And it didn't. Across the pond officially. That's what we, and it didn't. And that's what we would like to have seen. Now, this week, we now know that Mr. Downer, the former Australian ambassador, a high commissioner in London, uh, said that he had given it to the information to the Australian ambassador in the U.S. Mm. Well, now we know that that's not true. So, so Mr. Downer now has, has claimed that in an Australian newspaper, but we now know uh, from, from sources that have now spoke to different media outlets, uh, the Australians are denying that that's how this happened, that the Australian ambassador in the United States had nothing to do with this. Well, and quite frankly, that's what we want our partners in, the, in Australia to do. We don't think that they should be investigating or looking into political campaigns and then willy-nilly throwing that information over to the U.S. government and then opening investigations into political so campaigns. If the president, that's not what we want to see. If the president is not a target, why are we talking about a potential interview with the special prosecutor? Back to the letter that, that Fox News has obtained, and that is basically a letter from the senior legal team outlining the, re, outlining the reasons why the president should not sit with Robert Mueller and is not uh, uh, going to be subpoenaed and should not be. So if he's not a target, why did they have to send this letter? <laughs> well, I, I agree with you, right? So this is the difference. So, so, so Mr. Gowdy believes that he's been told by the Department of Justice on several occasions that Mr. Trump's not a target. But what I keep going back to is, is that, well, wait a second, we know from Mr. Comey, he said that the Trump campaign was the reason that they opened up the counterintelligence investigation. So they did open up an investigation in the Trump campaign. And so look, maybe I'm not a lawyer. Maybe there's a legal definition, legal definition as to why he's not a part of this. However, I don't think that's the case here. I mean, I just think that it's impossible to believe in, in normal America, if you open up into the Trump campaign, you absolutely uh, are opening up into Donald Trump himself. Uh, that's my opinion. Mr. Gowdy doesn't think so. He's a lawyer. He's worked with DOJ. I don't know who's right, but it's one of the things that we have to get to the bottom of. You are investigating the State Department right now to try and understand how the information has flowed, ultimately getting to the FBI to launch this investigation. What can you tell us about your investigation into the State Department? Well, that was the new information I was referring to just a little bit ago, is that uh, the New York Times had reported that uh, Mr. Downer, the Australian High Commissioner, had brought this information through official channels through Five Eyes Intelligence. That didn't happen. We have people in the State Department who say that they absolutely, that they were involved. So people in the U.S. State Department have admitted they were involved. So now we're trying to figure out, well, who at the State Department was involved? Did Mr. Downer take this information to the State Department? Is that what happened? And did the State Department then take that to the FBI, because somehow all the, the normal procedures and processes were short-circuited in this investigation. And why is this important? It's important because they opened up an investigation into a political campaign, Maria, a political campaign. Not, we're not talking about a, you know, terrorism. We're not talking about something criminal. They used our intelligence services 
by opening up a counterintelligence investigation. Mm. They did not have to convene a grand jury. None of that had to happen here, which is why it really falls on the House of Representatives. It falls on the Intelligence Committee. And this is, this is why people should be nervous. There's very few people in this country who can actually get to the bottom of what happened here. I prefer not to have to be doing this. There's a lot of important work that we could be doing, but the American people are counting on Congress to get to the bottom of this. We're yeah. the only ones with the with the classification that with the with this clearances that matter to get to the bottom of the situation. And so, uh, even though we don't want to be doing it, we're the ones that have to do it because yeah. if we don't, who who will? And and I just don't think members. If they're being honest, all the members of my committee don't right. believe that the counterintelligence capability should be used to target a political party. Real, none, of, real quick, none of my members on the Republican side. Congressman, here. we're going to take a short break, but I've got to ask you about the Google story where in the search results it says Nazism as an ideology for the Republicans. You as a California congressman, we'll be right back with that. Stay with us. And I am back with House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunes. Mr. Chairman, you've got uh, the uh, uh, primary in California next week, and you've also got an IG report forthcoming. What are you expecting from the Inspector General's report uh, with re regards to the email investigation of Hillary Clinton? Well, we're a little disappointed in that uh, this has been delayed another week. And my experience uh, with this is a lot of time the lawyers get a hold of it and they start to water down the report. So it was supposed we were supposed to receive it this week. Now it's been pushed to next week. I know there are some interviews with FBI officials on this this week. Uh, these are also officials that we're very interested in because a lot of the Clinton email investigation team are the same people that are involved uh, with the scandals that we're, we're interviewing and we're investigating. And you've got the primary in California on Tuesday. Right before that primary, you being a California congressman, I want to get your take on this because uh, basically as an ideology of the California Republican Party, less than a week before the primary, Nazism shows up uh, in, the, in the search results from Google. Google displayed the information in the knowledge panel next to search results which listed Nazism alongside fiscal conservatism, market liberalism, and ideologies of the state GOP. Your reaction, sir? Yeah, so we're on the front lines out here in California. I always say this, you know, I'm, I'm used to getting attacked. I enjoy getting attacked uh, by these crazy leftists. But I think what the American people need to understand is that there is bias against conservatives and Republicans all across this country. And now as you see things, it's always been there with newspapers and television, but now as you see it getting into the internet, you know, it's one of the challenges we have with millennials. So if somebody types in Republican and up comes Nazi, well, nobody wants to be affiliated uh, with Nazis. So this is one of the challenges we're having with millennials. I just looked uh, uh, on Twitter, uh, Drudge, the Drudge Report is being censored today. So for the last three or four days, I, I haven't been able to get on the Drudge Report because it's being censored on Twitter. So this censorship of conservatives and Republicans and conservative values continues in this country. And here in California, uh, we're on the front lines. I just hope that at some point people realize there's a reason why California is not doing as well as the rest of the country. But what are you California is a great, are, great state. Are we going to see new legislation uh, to, to try to stop? social media from censoring conservative ideas then? Well, the best thing would be is, is for there to be some, you know, a new search engine that actually uh, doesn't censor conservatives. I think there's a free market solution here if somebody can compete with Google. Uh, if they can't, then ultimately we're looking at monopolies and then that, you know, that brings in a whole other set of circumstances is are these companies, Facebook, Twitter, Google, Apple, et cetera, are they monopolies? And should they be reined in? I, I would hope we don't have to go there. I would hope that, that they you know, just don't get involved in politics and don't censor conservatives and Republicans. But if they continue to do it, then we'd have to move, obviously, to hearings on these issues. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much.